Hello, how is everybody doing today? This is Jason with work to invest I'm not going to take too long with this video. I'm going to try to keep it uh, as short as possible. But I want to talk to you about rentals versus REITs or what is called real estate investment trust. The pros and the cons. So there's advantages to both with rentals and REITs. Both of them are you're investing with into real estate. But I'm more into rentals. I I have more I'm invested more into rental property, but there's some pros and there's some cons. And I want to talk to you about that. And there's a lot of good pros and a few cons with REITs, but I will talk to you about those as well. But let's talk about the rentals for a moment and some of the pros and the cons. I'm just going to discuss that. And when I when I'm talking about re rentals, I am talking about uh, homes that are single family units, three bedrooms, two bedrooms, or not too many of condos, but even though you could invest into condos if you had to, but more like duplexes, triplex, fourplex, this, the smaller rental properties. I'm not, in this video, I'm not going to talk about apartments and so on. That's kind of, of a different ball game, but just your single family houses, that has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, or three bedrooms and one bathroom. Th these are the rentals that I am talking about. And that's the one that is, uh, there's kind of a unique niche. You're not competing with apartments. You're not competing with people that have duplexes that have one or two bedrooms. So this is more for like families. So there's a husband and a wife. They usually have kids, usually about two or three kids. So they're looking for more room they're looking for that that third or fourth bedroom and that's where i like to invest in N not the smaller units and so on where it's only one bedroom or two bedrooms because you kind of get you kind of have a different clientele but there's a unique clientele that will take care of your property and it's usually the ones with a husband and wife and you two or three kids and so on and they kind of want a backyard they want a front yard they want a backyard for uh, their kids to go in the backyard and play around they kind of not looking for that duplex feel or apartment type feel or even a condo that's kind of a different clientele that you're dealing with so that's what that's the kind of clientele that I'm talking about when I'm talking about these rental properties in this video so all right Let's get into some of this. So for rentals, you have to have more money to invest. And usually, depending on what bank you go to, you will need a 20% down payment, depending on what bank you go to. Some of them, you can kind of get less. Some of them even ask for more, depending on the situation, depending on the property, depending on your credit, depending on uh, the assets that you do have. Uh, it just depends on the bank that you go with. So you definitely want to shop that around. And I will make a video talking more about uh, investing into real estate and getting into more details. But for the most part, they require a percentage down. And it's usually 20%. So if you're buying a house for $100,000, for example, then you need to have 20000 right off the bat just for the investment part. That's not your closing costs, your, your closing fees, your, your insurance and and taxes that you have to pay ahead of time and so on so if you buy the house cheaper then it's a lesser down payment so if you buy the house for seventy two thousand or seventy five thousand then that's a, a less of a down payment that you have to come up with so and before i go any further the properties that i like to invest in are the cheaper properties that you can find that are foreclosed or most of them are foreclosures and they do have some that are listed for HUD and usually they go for anywhere between 60,000, 65,000 or 75, 80,000 dollars. So it's nice to when you buy these properties that you walk in into equity once when you fix them up and you have them rented out. And that's kind of like the sweet spot that 60,000 to 75, 80,000 dollar range. And by buying it at that price, lesser down payment that you have to come up with. So 
not too many houses are left on the market, at least in my area. I'm in the New Orleans area, so there's not too many houses left around that price point of $60,000. There, there's a few that come around every now and then, but mostly it's around $75,000, $80,000. So it just depends on your market of what you can find, what's out there in your area. Every area is going to be different. Your market might be different from my market. Your market might be better. Uh, you have to do some research with your market as well. You have to learn about the rents. What is what is the property going to go for? How much rent can you get for that property? Uh, it's a regular three-bedroom house. Is it $1,200 a month or is this three-bedroom house around $1,500 a month on average? So you could just know your market and your, your numbers when it comes to that. Uh, another thing about rentals I want to touch base with is dealing with t tenants and collecting rent so you have to screen your tenants find them locate them uh for the video that i'm talking about the the course finding tenants we'll talk about more details about screening tenants finding them what to look for and you always got to prepare for the next tenant and i just want to give you that when you're doing this process and you're screening these tenants, you always have to keep in mind the next tenant that's going to be into that house. Whether whether what kind of repairs you're going to make and so on, that you're going to be in this for the long term. This is not a short term uh, business. So this is more of a long term business. So you, you got to keep the next tenant in mind that's going to move into this house once when this tenant moves out. And so and the when that future tenant moves out you got to think about the next tenant that's going to move in so always keep that in mind and collecting rent you're going to run into situations where the rent's not going to be available for whatever reason you know the they're just behind but usually for the most part they they pay they might need an extra week or two but they pay for the most part uh but then again it depends on your market it depends on what's out there and how you screen your tenants and how you look for them you know what website did you use was it a referral from a friend or or even another tenant can recommend someone to you so it just depends another thing about rentals is the repairs i mean the repairs can range from the ac unit the heater uh, the water heater appliances the stove or the thermostat but for the most part the AC unit and the heater is my biggest repair bill. And sometimes you get some other weird stuff like some doors or the toilet, some sinks. But for the most part, no. Uh, my biggest repair is the AC units or the, the heater. So uh, if you decide to get into rentals, just keep that in mind that you have a system in place for repairmen. You have a good AC guy, a good guy for plumbing a handyman next thing will be tax advantage so with tax advantage you can claim things on your tax deduction repairs interest uh, vacancies you can claim these deductions on your taxes hard assets banks love real estate at, in your portfolio as a hard asset it just they just know Equity is built up into it. Real estate usually goes up for the most part. It does come down when there's a bubble. But for the most part, real estate goes up and banks rarely lose on real estate. Unless they have too much real estate on their books and and they, a lot of bad loans. But for the most part, banks love it when you have real estate as your assets. Leverage. Good thing about real estate is banks will loan you money more easily with real estate if you have a property that is a hundred thousand dollars and you need a loan for fifty thousand dollars if the property is paid off you can do a line of credit or a loan on that property very easily than with stocks and bonds all right so with equ equity build up is great when you're finding these properties for seventy thousand eighty thousand dollars and they are worth hundred thousand dollars for easy numbers well once when you buy that property at seventy thousand or eighty thousand dollars 
and it's worth a hundred thousand dollars then right off the bat you have a profit or a, a net gain of twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars so it's if you were able to find properties at that price range if not if you don't have any pro properties in that price range then it probably wouldn't work now if you pay full price if you paid a hundred thousand dollars for the property and it's worth a hundred thousand dollars then you didn't build up that much equity and it takes more time uh, whether the market goes up or by you making your monthly payment that will bring down the principal and then i'll show equity gain uh Real estate with rentals have a high cash yield. Uh, for the most part, I try to make $500, $600 a month on the property. Now, that doesn't include repairs and other fees and stuff like that and maintenance. And, and But for the most part, I try to make around that amount with the rents and how much I owe on the property. But... Some months are good and some months aren't. So it just depends. It depends on what breaks, what doesn't break, what needs to be repaired, and what needs to be looked at. Uh, that's why real estate is not for everyone. It you you really do have to treat real estate as its own business. So you got to have a system in place. It's some people just does don't like dealing with tenants. They don't like dealing with Section Eight. If you decide to take that route, they they rather not deal with the headaches so some months are good and some months aren't some months you probably won't get a phone call or text message and everything went smooth and everybody turned in their rents some months uh, you might have a tenant leaving you might have a tenant that might not be able to pay you for whatever reason um, you might have a, a month where the ac unit is broken and you have to pay 500 bucks you know two or three hundred dollars to repair the ac unit or um, in some cases, you know, your AC unit might be too old and you got to buy a new one. So you have to pop, pop down a couple, a couple of thousand dollars on that. So, so real estate is not for everyone, but there, there, there is some pros into that. Now, if you are not into real estate and dealing with tenants and finding tenants and collecting rent, then your next best option will be something that's called REITs. So this is Real Estate Investment Trust, which is right here. So REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. It takes less money to invest is one of the things I like about it is that right off the bat, the minute you start investing in this, um, whether it's a monthly dividend or a quarterly dividend from these REITs, you know, that, that following month, depending on your timing is that you would get so much money back from your dividends <clears throat> and it takes less money so the average that a lot of people put down towards these uh for these dividend portfolios these REITs is about a thousand dollars because you got to think about it for every trade there's a fee uh if you don't have the thousand maybe just start off with 500 or 200 but you just want to have enough that you buy in for these shares and to cover the fees and so on so you kind of want to have that lump sum down payment of at least a thousand that that's kind of like what you want to get to but if not if you have 500 then that's fine uh REITs will pay you there's monthly or quarterly payments easy to invest you don't have to deal with repairs you don't have to deal with the tenants you don't have to worry about finding tenants, collecting payments, repairs, if something breaks, if, if you know, their boiler room breaks or, you know, the electrical panel or anything electrical is wrong. You, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So you just invest your money and you become a true investor. Whereas with rentals, when it's all said and done, it's you're, you're you have to treat it as a business. It's almost like a franchise. Like you have to deal with your franchise ease and, and so on so that's one way to look at it the average return is about four percent you do get you can find higher but the average return is about four percent return on your money uh liquid and leverage you could find some banks that will leverage 
on your portfolio stocks. Not many, but some will. Not like real estate where you, your local bank will loan you the money for uh, as real estate as a collateral. Liquid, very liquid, only what you have to sell. And keep in mind with rentals, rental property, you have to put it up for sale. You got to put it on the market. You have to wait for a buyer. You have to probably fix up the place before you sell it, depending if you want top dollar. Or if you know another investor, you can sell that property to another investor. Equity buildup is slower with REITs because you're dealing with the market. So whether the market goes up or down, it depends on that's your equity. So if the market goes up in value, your equity goes up. If the market goes down, then your equity goes down. Even though the real estate is strong, the, the, the real estate market is doing good, the properties are, are still worth a lot, a lot of money, and the property did not go down in value, your, your value could go down. So just keep that in mind. With real estate, once when you bought it, more than likely if you bought it at the right price, your equity will stay up. So um, that's why it's good to have a mixture. It has a, it's a good to have a mixture of rentals and REITs in your portfolio. Keep that money in. Last thing I want to talk about is with REITs, by law, they have to pay a dividend. So the way the REITs are set up is that they want a special tax break to where it's not, noble, not a double taxation. So to do this, one of the things that they were able to say, okay, if you, if you want these rules and these special liabilities to where you, you have this, these protections, then you have to treat this something different. And one of the things that you have to do is, if it's a REIT, you have to pay a dividend. So a, a large proportion of your profit has to be distributed as dividends to your shareholders. And that's one of the good things about it. Whereas a corporation, they can hold on to their dividend. They, they don't have to pay a dividend. They can hold on to it and use that money for reinvesting. Whereas a REIT, they have to pay a dividend. So that's, that's a very interesting thing and one of the benefits of a REITs so but whether you decide to take on REITs into your portfolio or rentals either way real estate is an excellent way to strengthen your financial freedom and stability just remember that uh, pretty much every investor out there has some kind of real estate in in their portfolio even the businesses have real estate in, in their portfolio. Last thing I want to talk about is some websites that uh, I want to discuss with you real quick. So make sure you go to worktoinvest.com. They have a page on here. It's called resources. So click on that. Check that out. There's tons of free information. And let's go to it right here. Let's talk about it. So we're talking about dividends and from real estate's or REITs and so if you want to learn some more information <clears throat> go to my resource page and there's a link right here so scroll down there's a section called dividend and investing in stocks so click on this one and it's going to bring you to this book right here and you can learn more about REITs investing in REITs real estate investment trust very good book uh, authored by Ralph <clears throat> so REITs are pretty basic, but if you wanted to learn more about it, the pros and the cons, check out his book. So this is one of the books that I own, and it's 448 pages, and it talks about a lot of details, and I think it even talks about how to set up your own REITs, if I ain't mistaken. I think this is that book that talks about that, but uh, it goes more into details about the pros and the cons, but after it's all said and done, you're going to be like, okay, I, I know what to do with this. And this this talks about more than what I need to know. And another website I want to talk to you about is this website called Dividend.com. There's a section that's called Dividend Tools. And you click right here and it brings you to Real Estate Investment Trust. And this will have some more, a little bit more information. And then it will have a list of companies. There's so many companies that you can invest at are REITs. So Commercial Real Estate Corporation, Ares, Agree Realty Corporation, 
there's so many and this is just the A's and you can see right here all the different pages so check out this website dividend.com click on here dividend tools scroll down and look for the section that says real estate investment trust and it'll give you a whole list of REITs that you could invest in and some of them are quarterly some of them are monthly and it's another thing you want to diverse on you want some monthly dividends and you want some quarterly paying dividends so also don't forget to subscribe I only got zero at, at the making of this video but I will be making more videos I will uh, be talking about this more and more and don't forget to check out my resource page tons of free information talks of some, there's some books out there real estate online business tools I talked about that in one of my other videos uh, that d this deals with more of my affiliate marketing right here it talks about affiliate marketing this is ways to increase your income and to where you can use this income to invest in something like either real estate or dividends stocks so all right thank you for listening to this video i am about to go to a festival and i'm about to leave so i can't be too late but hit that subscribe button help me grow go to my facebook page hit the like button and thank you very much